Ten minutes is enough. Ten minutes is good. Yeah. I mean, I can go on forever. So yeah. Ten minutes will make make. Cut talks, Mom. Stay Okay, I'll try to translate you. Right. So, what sentence? Sentence. Sentence. Yes. Sentence. That's right. Okay, my name is Christopher Busby. I'm an uh, international expert on the health effects of radiation. Uh, Professor Busby, I'm a mirror expert on the radiation, the radiation on the body. Um, I, I was in Sweden about three weeks ago talking at the Royal um, Swedish Academy of Sciences about the health effects of radiation. The, the problem was that in Sweden they want to build a, a high-level nuclear waste repository at Forsmark uh, on the Baltic Sea. Проблема в том, что Швеция хочет построить саркофаг, место для захоронения радиоактивных отходов недалеко And the Swedish uh, uh, force, force mark, it's, force it's about 50 miles north of uh, Stockholm. It's underneath the sea, kind of, because a tunnel and it goes underneath the Baltic Sea. Okay. It's right on the coast, right on the coast. Um, I told, I told the, the um, Nuclear Waste Council that um, the health effects of radiation uh, are modeled by a model which is incorrect now. Я предупредил консулат по здоровью, что модель оценки радиационной опасности сегодня она неправильна. The model is that of the International Commission on Radiological Protection. Модель, которая составлена Международной комиссией по радиозащите. And it was developed in 1952. года. But it still, but it still nowadays it still represents the way in which uh, governments control the limits of exposure to radiation. Но они до сих пор правительство используют эту модель для контроля, для оценки уровня радиации и влияния. And as a result of this, many people are dying and have died. И как результат этого много людей умирает, продолжает умирать. Умирали и продолжают. The model is based in almost entirely on the health effects of the uh, Hiroshima atomic bomb. Эта модель, которая построена в прошлое, да, она построена на результатах оценки хиросимской бомбардировки. But the problem is that the radiation exposures from people living near the Baltic Sea are to internal substances like strontium-90 and plutonium-239. Slow <laughs> down. Okay. The, 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 the problem is that the exposures to, to people uh, who live near the Baltic Sea are internal, like they are inside the body. Большая проблема то, что люди, которые живут вокруг Балтийского моря, они получают это внутрь. Плутонием... Плутонием 239, Now, because the Baltic Sea is an inland lake, it's not a sea at all, it's a closed lake. Baltica is a really как озеро, а не как реальное море. With very little exchange at the sky. All of the radiation from the nuclear weapons tests in the 1960s and all of the radiation from Chernobyl came into the Baltic. Все результаты взрывов и тестов ядерных бомб 60-х, результаты Чернобыля, это облако, оно все прошло над Балтиком. And this radiation has been measured by Helcom in Helsinki. Helcom делал замеры радиации. And there's as much as 500,000 becquerels per kilogram of cesium-137 in, in the silt, in the mud, in the sediment. Uh, on the ground. On, yeah, in the bottom. Uh, on the ground of the water, on the ground of the, on the, the ground of the water, the, the bottom of the sea. On the Dnemarskom. On the Dnemarskom, yeah. On the Dnemarskom, we have 500,000. 500,000. 500,000. 500,000. 500,000. 500,000. 500,000. 500,000. Becquerel. Becquerel. Becquerel is one disintegration per second. One Becquerel is in a second. So in one second, there's one disintegration, okay? Um, and 500,000 is 500,000 disintegrations in one second. 
500 тысяч каждую секунду идет разделение. The problem is that when the wind blows, that this material becomes airborne and comes inland. Проблема такая, что когда дует ветер, радиоактивность поднимается в облако, и это облако идет на землю. And we have studied this effect on the Irish Sea, where there is a similar problem. Мы изучали этот проект в Ирландском море, где похожая проблема. And we find a 40% excess of cancer in the first two kilometers from the sea. И мы пришли к выводу, что 40% получает рак именно вот в тех, кто живут в прибрежных. So it's a so it's a very big problem that the Swedish government are going to permit an increase in these amounts of material that are that are released to the to, to the Baltic Sea. Uh, это будет очень большая проблема, если шведское правительство разрешит строительство этого захоронения на территории Балтийского моря. Now there is a way in which we can deal with this. Uh, но есть путь, как мы можем это решить. The European Union has uh, uh, regulations which are based on um, a, a law called the Euratom law. Европейский Союз имеет закон, который Евроатом, который регулирует. And it's called it's called the Basic Safety Standards. Основы Basic Основы стандарта. Now, in 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 the, in there's a clause. There's part of this law that says that if new evidence emerges that the risk model is wrong, this is the IP risk model is wrong. Then all of the um, practices have to be re-assessed. Uh, Часть этого закона говорит, что если модель, которая использовалась для анализа, показывает, что она неправильна, то необходимо прекратить и сделать переоценку этого моделирования, то есть новые новые исследования. Now this reassessment has to begin in the member state country. И это должно начаться в одной из стран ЕС. And if it's not done properly in the member state country, then you can go to European court. So, all it needs in, is, is two things. In Latvia, you, the government needs to, dis, needs to say that on the, on the uh, one of the, what's that convention, the, the ESPU convention, the ESPU convention, Latvia can refuse to permit Sweden to continue with its. Вот что можно, как в Латвии правительство Латвии может запретить правительству Швеции делать этот проект. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that the second thing is that any Swedish body, like a scientific body, like the university or 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 any any like the the Academy of Sciences or anything in Latvia, is you can write to the. Radiation Protection Department of the Latvian government. And, and uh, любая институция, любое любое учреждение может написать в бюро по защите радиации. And you can demand that they require that they ask uh, that the uh, that the Latvian Radiation Department uh, implements the Basic Safety Standards Directive of the European Union. И можно сказать, чтобы этот офис проследил за выполнением закона. Now the, only, the, yeah. Now the only thing that you need then is the new and important evidence. There is a huge amount of evidence published in the in the scientific literature now since Chernobyl. Which shows that the ICRP risk model for internal radionuclides is completely false. And the most recent example of this is from Fukushima. И самые последние результаты это после Фукусимы, то, что мы имеем после Фукусимы. In Fukushima they have been measuring thyroid cancer by ultrasound. После Фукусимы они мерили щитовидную, да, щитовидную железу под ультразвуком. And the and 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 three and in the in the people in Fukushima area, the prefecture, they have found 130 thyroid cancers. И в районе, в префектуре Фукусимы было зафиксировано 130. 
And in a, in, a, in a control district in Nagasaki, they found zero. В то время как в Нагасаки они контрольный контроль был ноль. The ICRP risk model, which is based on Hiroshima, predicts 0.2. Модель, которая была использована после Хиросимы, показывала, что только 0.2. So, so, so this is this is new and important evidence that the ICRP risk model is wrong by a very large amount. Um, and this is not the only uh, only example. I, I have published three studies in the peer review literature in the last six months. Uh, which show high levels of cancer, breast cancer, near nuclear sites in the uh, nuclear power stations in the United Kingdom. And there's a, there's a lot of other evidence too. I could go on and on and on, but I mean that's enough. So, so this is the basic picture. То есть есть еще много других исследований, но, как видите, это основная картинка, то, что вот я вам показал. And I am happy to support, I live in, in Latvia a lot of the time, I'm happy to support any effort to open up this subject, because it's an important one and people are dying. So you're planning a project to clean both the sea? Well, I mean, we could, we can even... Я проживаю в Латвии, в большую часть тоже в большом времени, и я рад помочь людям здесь в Латвии поднять эту проблему, решить эту проблему. Well, there are certainly ways in which we can clean radionuclides from the, from the, from the Baltic Sea. Определенно есть несколько способов, как мы можем очистить Балтику от радиации. But it costs a lot of money. Но это стоит много денег. For example. Well, it, it will cost, it will say. The question is, uh, you are talking about the relation. Uh, a general topic of our conference today is a uh, chemical. Uh, Ypres, master gas, uh, all the Zaman, Zarin, all sorts. Do you have any idea about this? Any yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. Okay. It's about chemistry. Yes. Um, but what sort of you mean? How do we do it? Is that your experience? yes? What, what, what we can do it because right. it's uh, well dropped fifty years ago and now started slowly polluted. Uh, well, uh, other, I mean, and we, he's we, captain too. He has boats. Yeah, I have, uh, I, have, I have boats. I have three boats. Um, well, do you know where it is? Uh, more or less. And, and are the drums intact? Uh, no. It's a, no. But you said that after fifty years of erosion. Well, yes, but if they're, if they're shells, they could, they're iron, they're probably all right still. No. No. No, it's, it's corroded and start to pollute it. Well, then it depends upon the extent of the pollution. So the first thing you have to do is find the extent of the pollution in the ground, in the, in the sediment. Okay, the first thing we have to do is to determine the level of Mustard gas is quite long-lived long in the yes. environment. So we need to monitor it. This is dichlorodiethyl sulfide, right? No. <laughs> This is this is mustard gas. Dichlor mustard gas, yes. Dichlorodiethyl sulfide. Okay. Yes. Um, well, there, there is a contaminated area in North Wales that I worked with, where, where it's still there, um, and you can you can you can remove it, of course, and then dump so it. You, you can't. You can dredge the, the, it. You said the problem was as we discussed. Sorry, I I will a little bit explain. You can dredge it. You can dredge the mud. You dredge the mud, but when you start to dredge, because uh, what's happened after the second world war, uh, so all this uh, German. Yeah, uh, gas uh, shells and uh, all those right. were dropped together with the ships were simply sunk in different areas. So, area so the these box. are ships that are sunk with the stuff inside? But they were sunk with the ships, partly just bought in the box and the box was dropped over the water and uh, right. so it's... Uh, and now, after this 50 years, we have this, uh, this corrode, metal, we can start to corrode it, and right. it starts to pollute and influence all this... Uh, well then you need to... You need to you, it's, uh, why, why can't you dredge it? But when you start drill it, you start to pick up for What's the of the ships, and it's got, uh, more than 500 meters. 100 meters? Yes. Oh, right, okay. Between, between. Oh. Yeah. between 60 and 200. Yeah, well, you need you can do it, but it costs a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we went down in the Channel Islands last year. Yes. That there's a, there's a, a documentary, German documentary, because they dropped uh, plutonium into the, into the um, English Channel. Okay. In drums, but and this is lots of tides, very big tidal movements. But 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 it's still there, and the drums are still there. You can pick it up, but you've got to use a, a, a high-pressure submarine 
uh, which is controlled from a boat. Mm -hmm. you know? control. Yeah. So you sit up in a boat and you keep the boat in position, um, you know, with thrusters, and you send your submarine down and then you pick it up. And we picked it up. You can do it. You can pick the drums up. You can just locate them and put a lock on them and just pull them to the surface. You can do that. But, uh, how you can pick up if it's a, all the barge, for example, was uh, well. If it's inside, inside, if it's inside of if it's inside a boat, then you've got problems, of course. Yeah, you have. So I mean, uh, it may be. I can't. I mean, you can't send divers down to, to, to that level. Uh, you can do it. Oh, especially big divers. Well, you can send you can send subs down and you can cut the thing up. But I mean, it's horribly expensive. And then and then you know you've got to be careful because because you, you might cause more more harm than good you know, yeah. if you start pulling it around and, and dispersing it. Yeah. Then you've got problems. So uh, yeah. So it's one of these things that that we have done as a human race, which is more or less kind of impossible to deal with. But it, it, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't try. So I think what you I mean, what I would do if I had enough money, is I would go along and, and, and send some submarines down to see how bad it is, because you might be able to get yeah, a lot of it. Okay, see. yeah. The first is a monitoring to see yeah, the yeah. what it is. Yeah. What's the next step? Well, the next step. Uh, so, is, sorry, I just said. No, no. Yes. The next step uh, is to take what you can, all right? Okay. Because you can have two bits. Uh, you can so, have a bad so, bit. Okay, can I just say? Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Я сейчас поговорили, я объяснил профессору просто, что о чем мы здесь говорили и какие его идеи на этот счет. Но первое, конечно, что он сказал, это возможность, то, что у них был похожий случай, там сейчас они был с Плутонием. Там. И они, в принципе, там, этими беспилотными подводными лодками, ну, эти специальные подводным аппаратом подняли, нашли возможность. И как одну из возможностей тоже для решения нашей проблемы, он предлагает, что можно использовать беспилотные аппараты, но, опять же, он не говорил с этим данным, потому что можно сделать больше вреда, чем польза от этого. Дела. Lot, Поэтому первое, что надо сделать, это обследовать. Обследовать. Вот, вот об этом ты мы no, должны it's говорить. Мониторинг. Мониторинг. Правильно. Об этом мы и будем говорить. No, okay. Second step. It's, it's, Первый шаг. It's, it's easy in the Baltic, because you don't have tides, you see. Yes, much, much we, easier. We, we had to anchor the boat and, 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 yeah. and keep it running against a, a three yeah. or four or five knot tide, and then send the submarine down, and it's been blown no, 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 Это чисто техническая проблема в Уэльсе. Там очень большие течения, особенно приливные отливные. Там уровень может меняться на 10-12 метров. На Балтике в этом плане нас проще, профессор говорит, потому что у нас нет этих течений, и мы спокойно можем работать. And tide is running at seven knots where we, where we were working. Uh, Twelve meters difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, но течение до семи узлов доходило, так что им было очень тяжело там. Okay, well what you do is you then have to decide on, on the easy stuff and the difficult stuff. So once you know where it is, then you can partition it, say this is impossible, but we can do this. Because in life you can't no, yeah. always get what you want, you know, but you can sometimes get a bit of it. Compromise. Yeah. Ну и в реальности, что мы можем посмотреть, когда после мониторинга посмотреть реальную ситуацию, можем посмотреть те, которые мы реально что-то можем делать, и там, где мы не можем делать, потому что в жизни не бывает так, что мы можем делать все. So you then, so then what you do is you bring up what you can. И мы должны делать то, что мы можем делать. And, and actually, this little submarine that we used in Germany was, was not that expensive, and, and, it, and it, ca it had little pincers like a crab, you know, so you can pick up individual stuff. <laughs> Okay, well, that, that's, that's, that, that's the best you can do, really. Um, I, I mean, if you want to start blowing the barges up, I mean, you can go and you can cut them open and go inside, and you can do all that. But it's dangerous. It's, it's terrible it's dangerous, because once you pick up this, uh, and it's, uh, you start the pollution, and you will pollute it more than just into the water. Well, I'm not sure about that. It depends upon, you see, that the, the, the material is either inside a shell, yes. uh, in which case it's very concentrated, or it's already outside it, okay? Now you want to get the you want to well you want to get the shells you want to get all of the shells. Yeah, but see, after the 50 years, the shells they become not touchable. Once you pick a uh, touch it, it's just simply destroyed. And, uh, all the no, I don't believe that. Well, you can test that anyway. You can check that out. Uh, I can tell you, I have experience with uh, the mining after the World War One, World War Two mines. Yeah, but these, are not, pick up. these are not the same things because these, are, uh, in order to retain retain the material, they had to have very thick. 
casings, these shells, right? Yes. The mine also. The mine also. Well, like that, get that thick, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, you, you can do some experiments, I suppose. But anyway, that's, what, that's all I can suggest, okay? Thank you very much. Right, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Значит, тут это правильная модель, которую разработал Кристофер Басби, да? Она называется по-английски ECRR, European Committee on Radiation Risk Model. Она в тысячи раз больше. Ой, как это? Жертв показывает эпидемиологическим студиям, которые они проводили, чем нынешнюю модель ICRP, которую государство использует. Это значит сайт, на котором вы найдете информацию о нашем регионе Балтийского моря, какие там жуткие проекты происходят, да, о, о всех кладбищах э, радиоактивных больших опорах. А это, это сайт, на котором вы найдете петицию, которую э, страна наша может писать Европарламенту, чтобы остановить эту неправильную модель, потому что есть только доказательства. Там уже мы с Банбисом сделали мало, как это, э, основание для документа, где надо только изменить ваше имя, да? Вы можете его просто скачать и поменять немножко, и можно посылать в Европарламент документ, чтобы изменить эту модель. И я вам скажу, э, академик Яблоков подсчитал, что Радиация уничтожила миллиарды за последние десятки лет. Миллиарды не э, родившихся детей, потому что бесплодие огромное тоже. Любые заболевания можно получить от радиации. А это, это сайт urat.com.org, это как раз э, э, научный сайт Кристофера Базбиста, где э, можно скачать ICRR модул книгу. Всю книгу в PDF формате вы можете тут скачать. Вот эти три очень важные сайты, да? И вот эта модель, правильная модель. Правильная модель. Я продолжу, я продолжу тему уважаемого профессора из Швеции, живущего ныне в Латвии. Я так понимаю, да? В обоих местах. Вон там частично. Так вот, 